Have you ever done a video and then you bring it back to your computer later and you think, man, I got a lot of Flickr in this one. Flickr sucks, man. Um, it makes your video completely unusable or you do what I did and you just gut it. Control A, Control M, export, keep it moving, right? Rookie mistake. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to avoid getting that flicker and then if you can't avoid it, how to remove it later with some of that sweet magic we call post-production. Hi, my name is Devante with the Camera Kicks channel. And on this channel, I aim to help creative minds become creative people. So if you are creative, consider becoming a subscriber to my channel. Okay, so I have two steps for you to avoid getting Flickr in your video, as well as how to remove it in post. If you wanna to skip to the post-production part, I have the timestamps uh, below in the description. But you know, I'm already gonna say, uh, you should watch the entire video anyways, but if you're short on time, feel free. Number one is to sync your camera shutter to the lights in the room. Uh, basic terms is the 180, the 180 degree rule is you should have your shutter speed uh, double your frames, frames per second. So you can get, you know, that really cinematic motion blur that everyone talks about. Uh, but sometimes rules are meant to be broken. Um, so there's some non-video specific or like LED lights that aren't 60 hertz or 50 hertz, depending on if you're in the UK. So you have to set your shutter speed either lower or higher in order to compensate for that difference. Um, now, when you get into shooting in like 60 frames per second, um, trying to do slow-mo, it gets a little difficult because the faster you go, the more banding you'll get. And banding is those black lines that you get in between. What you don't wanna do is continue to go higher because that'll get worse. So you have to reduce your shutter to remove some of that banding. Now, if you cannot avoid that flicker at all, or you just shot the video and you didn't notice it, maybe you know the TV was flickering or something like that, there is a way to remove it in post. And bonus tip at the end of the video is you get some ghosting. Okay, tip number two is the post-production. To remove the flicker is actually very easy to do. You should be able to do it with basically any editor like Resolve or Final Cut, uh, but I use Premiere because I don't know, I just use Premiere, everyone uses Premiere. So let's say you're editing a whole sequence, right? You've, you've done all your cuts and stuff like that, and you notice there's some flicker. You can actually create a new sequence, drag the clip there just to target that specific portion of the video. Um, or if you have multiple portions of that video, uh, you can copy the one clip above the original um, using the right click, you can copy, go up and select the V2, and then paste on your timeline. Or you can just hold Alt and drag up, and that will create a duplicate as well. Now, take that V2 clip and move it one frame over. You may have to zoom in quite a bit, but just one frame. Um, you can also hold Alt and scroll, use a scroll wheel. Now, go up to Opacity and reduce it to 50% or whatever you feel like works for you. And that should get rid of your flicker. Now, bonus tip. Notice here that he's starting to kind of look blurry and that's because of the motion. And you can't avoid this if there's a lot of motion in your video. Well, you can. You can actually mask out the area that has the flicker. This won't always be perfect. Um, his hands are still looking a little blurry because he's kind of still in that portion because the video from the TV reflects off the, the table. But this should work for all the clips used from that one video. But in case it doesn't, you can copy the effects 
to the other clips that you use and voila, Flickr is gone. Now, this specific video was the first video I actually ever shot of someone else. Um, I was literally just getting in the video, so there were a lot of mistakes made here. Um, more good than bad, I learned a lot. And hopefully you learned a lot from this video. And if you did, then you already know what to do. Thumbs up, thumbs down, fill around on that red button if you enjoyed learning with me. If you really want a dirty understanding of what a diffuser is used for, check out my last video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Good vibes. Peace.